All right, now back to our closer look at the new look of the Republican Party. New RNC Chairman Michael Steele made clear the other day that he and the new president are not ideological soulmates. I would say to the new president, congratulations. It is it's going to be an honor uh, to uh, spar with him, and then I would follow that up with, how you like me now? <laughs> He's got a little attitude there. Uh, Martha Zoller and Warren Valentine both join us, join us um, radio shows with their names, both of them. <laughs> so, I was like, I don't know, Martha Zoller, I always go up the Martha Zoller show, and, uh, and it's just right. you guys with your own radio show. All right, so what do you think of this pick, Martha? Oh, I, I endorsed Michael Steele early. I thought he was a great choice because he is not only a fiscal conservative, but a social conservative. And, and you, you, an weren't surprised, guy. you weren't surprised by this, by them picking an African-American? I mean, not that, at that's all. A, honestly, that's the last thing that many people would say that Look, they think the Republican Party would I think I said this maybe last week, that we don't need another middle-aged white guy heading up the party. So I think I said that before. I think Michael is a guy that's won as a lieutenant governor statewide in Maryland, which has not been a red state. So he shows that he can carry states. He does a good job. Plus, he's a communicator. Okay. He's a communicator. Before I get to Warren, is this a change in tone, an opening of the tent, trying to reach out moment for the Republican Party? And do your listeners yeah, agree absolutely. with it? I think they will agree with it. Of course, it happened over the weekend. But I will tell you, why shouldn't the Republican Party reach out to minorities? They have a great record with minorities. Okay. They just communicate it poorly. Okay, Warren, <laughs> you think it's pandering to minorities? You know, I think Michael Steele is a great, uh, great choice here. Michael appears on my show uh, quite frequently, actually. Uh, I think he's going to energize the Republican base. I think he's going to reach out to minorities. But I will say this. This is not surprising to me because when you look at the history of the Republican Party, they did this in Illinois with Alan Keyes when Senator uh, Obama was running for that senator seat. They came in and brought Alan Keyes in because he was a minority. I remember then that. they came in and brought Sarah Palin in because of the Hillary Clinton factor. And now they bring in Michael Steele because of the president. I, I it's know. not surprising, uh, yeah. but it's but a good I, choice. I, wait a minute, I, I wouldn't, cre I wouldn't equate Alan Keyes. The Republican Party didn't bring him in. He brought himself. Well, in no, 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 no. In a way, in a way, no. it was interesting. No. That they brought in Alan Keyes yes, because of Barack Obama, yes, they uh, did. the state senator at the time, running for Senate. That's right. And there was no yeah, Republican Alan, candidate, that, that, so they brought in Alan Keyes because they thought they he might get, get another some Republican minority to do vote. it. That's right. Okay, so okay. in a way, you know, they were trying to open up the tent as well. All right, let's move on, guys. Let's talk about the stimulus package. Uh, Tuesday going in front of the Senate. Do you think this time that more Republicans, Martha, will he'll get more support from Republicans in the Senate than he did last week? Well, he'll get fewer Republicans than Democrats that voted for it, voted against it in the House. I think two, he could get two that are peeled off. Now, if two or three Democrats that are in more conservative areas go, go across, I, I don't know what will happen. The, the senator to watch, though, is Georgia Senator Johnny Isaacson. He okay. has got the best proposals that, are, that might bridge the gap. Okay, here's what people are saying. And I, I read something this morning. Uh, Frank Rich in the New York Times, a columnist, said that it was pure partisan politics. He said, where is their own patriotism? He was talking about uh, the Republicans. Where's the own patri patriotism now that economic terror is inflicting far more harm on their constituents than Saddam Hussein's non-existent WMD? I think, I think that's the catch-22 here, Don. I think Republicans are in a situation where if they don't support this, this stimulus package, if they don't support the bill, they almost look like they're being unpatriotic, unfortunately, when, in fact, maybe they're just trying to look out for their constituents. It's also true for the Democrats. I mean, I think some of the Democrats may look at this bill and say, it's a lot of pork in mm -hmm. here, and maybe we don't need to do this, or maybe this is a form of socialism, but I think a lot of people are going to support it because they don't want to come off, because they, they want to keep their look, position. I, I think equating the economy to terrorism is, is a little okay. ridiculous, but the good good news is the Senate will pass something and then it has to go to committee. Yeah. It's okay. not going to be with the House passed. All right. He said economic terrorism. So I, I, I get you on that. But also, uh, it's unfortunate that people, you know, many lawmakers see an opportunity to stick something in there and... Well, well, that's politics as you. Yeah, that's politics as you. You know, Barack Obama needs to get hold of the leadership. I gotta go, guys. President Thank Obama. You. President, President Obama. Obama. Oh, that's my right. Gosh. Okay, you guys talk. I'll keep reading. All right, let's talk about something uh, that... Now, I have three words for you, stimulus, recovery, and young, as in young presidency, a young administration. We have been talking extensively about all three, and so have these two all week. Martha Zoller and Warren Valentine, both hosts of their own syndicated radio shows. All right, guys, each of you has 60 seconds to run down the highlights of your shows. What are people buzzing about? Martha, you ready? I'm ready. I'm always You're ready. Up. Let's go. <laughs> 
Time is well, ticking. I tell you, first of all, the folks were talking about Michael Steele, and we had him on on Monday, and and he has got to convince conservatives, especially Christian conservatives, that he is going to be conservative enough, and he's been coming out swinging. But mainly the rest of the week, it was stimulus, stimulus, stimulus. Uh, you've got listeners that are being hit on all sides. You've got the local governments talking about things, the state governments talking about raising your taxes, and then now this this number in this federal government program that people just can't get their arms around. And I got to tell you, what they'd like to see is more tax cuts. What my listeners would like to see is more tax cuts and that kind of thing. They're very frustrated about this process, and they're very happy that Republicans are standing firm. And I don't think, you know, the question always gets asked about whether it is standing with the president or not. Well, you can stand with the president on your principles uh, or oppose him on the principles. That doesn't mean you don't want him to be successful. So they talked about that. And the final thing that was just a big surprise Martha, I you're up. for me sorry. was Michael Phelps. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, <laughs> you're up. I was up. watching the clock. <laughs> All right, Warren. You, you know, uh, the, the hang three, on, let's the, go. The, there the, you three, go. the three big things on my show this week uh, was Michael Steele. Is he an attack dog? for the Republicans on President Obama, meaning that did they choose an African-American so that it won't come off as racist if the Republicans are attacking him? The second thing that was a big story on my show was the case involving Congressman Lewis, which you did a wonderful piece on on your show on Saturday night, involving him and the former KKK member, reconciling their differences. It, it's a true sign of the times. Lastly, the stimulus package, package, but everybody was talking about the Ballantine plan. I have a plan to save America. You want to stimulate the economy? I got the five-point plan that will save this country. Oh, Warren, you did it in 40 seconds. Hey, I'm, I'm good like that. <laughs> Are you at a loss for words? I mean, I'm, I'm good like that, Doc. It sounds like a producer was in your ear going, you got to get to a break. Time to make money. That's okay. on my radio show normally. <laughs> okay, so uh, so let's uh, let's talk about uh, what's on tap for, for next week, Martha. I mean, obviously, sure. um, you know, like we said, we talked about a young presidency, and every it takes every administration a while to get its footing. But I, I think the challenges facing this administration are, are tougher than most most when you have an economy like this. And let's face it, the president's right. He was handed this. So it's, it, it's going to take a while. Well, of course, it's going to take a while. We didn't get into this overnight. I mean, it, we've got many of the same problems we had 16 years ago. But I think that what this week people are going to be talking about again is the stimulus package and how this goes forward. And then they're going to roll out the TARP money. And I think you made a great point in the last segment that a lot of people don't know that all these things are different things and that it adds up to about eight trillion dollars it's a lot of money mm -hmm. hey warren do you think the honeymoon period is over as i as i begin to read newspapers and read some of the criticism i'm like wow man this happened really quickly well he didn't have a honeymoon period in fact what i was predicting three weeks before he was inaugurated that january 21st would officially be called president blame president obama day yeah you did say that <laughs> you, you, you did know say because that. everything would be his his fault after January 20th. Now, you know, one thing, we have this young presidency and this young uh, administration, but it, it's very easy to fix this problem, in my opinion. If you would do just five things. One, if you want to stimulate the economy, instead of giving $800 billion to all these infrastructures and things like this, why don't you give every taxpayer $20,000? They can either save the money or invest it or do whatever they need to do. Two, make federal usury laws. Three, Give us a one-year moratorium on mortgages where people don't have to pay a mortgage. They can save that money or invest that money okay. or use it to fix their credit. Well, I'll okay. make there. it easier with and one point. And by American. Okay, go ahead, Martha. Uh, You'll get the last point. word. Suspend all taxes for three months. That's six hundred billion dollars. I agree. It would put people in their po money in their pockets today. Okay, I agree. so who's going to keep track on American spending like they are with the folks on Wall Street? If we give we give Americans all these moratoriums, I trust I trust Americans spending their own money. Don, right. this is the greatest country in the world. We'll do the right thing if you give us the opportunity. Very well said. Thank you. I knew you were going to say that. You said that to me <laughs> on the radio. Yes, Thank I did. Thank you, Warren. Hey, you guys, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Very busy week for us. Talk radio, no exception. Martha Zoller, Warren Ballantyne, both hosts, syndicated radio shows out there in America. Tonight, I'll let you two slug it out over the issues your listeners are talking about. 30 seconds each. We're not doing a minute anymore. We're going to rein you guys in. <laughs> All right, Warren, we're going to start with you because you mentioned earlier that there was a heated debate on your show about whether to keep Black History Month. Go. We need to keep Black History Month. It's no doubt about it. We learned so much about Martin Luther King, but what about the Greensboro Four? 